friends, welcome back to Amy Bakes. I'm Amy and today we're going to do a fun recipe. Um, today we're going to make pretzels. Recipe credit is going to go out to Better Homes and Gardens. I found this recipe a couple years ago in a fall baking book and it's absolutely wonderful. We are going to make soft pretzels. So let's go over our ingredients and supplies. For our ingredients today, we are going to need three-fourths a cup of milk, and it does specify not fat-free. So this is not a skim milk recipe. Use at least 2%, but I'm using whole milk. <clears throat> also, a quarter cup of water, and because we are going to be using yeast, I'm using spring water, not tap water, because tap water has chlorine in it, and it will kill the yeast. Um, so we've got, then we need one package of dry active yeast, and I buy in bulk, so that is two and a quarter teaspoons if you're measuring, or just one full package. We are also going to need two and one third, two, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So there's no actual exact measurement on this one. We're going to need one and a quarter teaspoon of fine sea salt. We're also going to need a couple tablespoons of butter. Forgot that earlier. Um, in addition, after they rise, we're going to need three cups of boiling water. So I'm going to use my kettle to get that boiling. We're going to need a half a cup of baking soda, one egg yolk, slightly beaten. We're going to use Thelma's egg today and then a tablespoon of water and coarse salt to sprinkle across the top. For the supplies today, we're going to need a mixer with a dough hook. Now, if you don't have one of these, it's okay. You're just going to hand knead it, but um, we're going to use the mixer today. We're going to need a saucepan, some measuring cups, measuring spoons. We're going to need a baking sheet with a parchment paper, and you are also going to need a thermometer so you can get an accurate temperature on your milk and water mixture. The first step is to, in a small saucepan, heat the milk, quarter cup of water, and the sugar over low heat until warm, and that reads 110 to 115 degrees. When I was going over my supplies, I did forget to mention sugar, but we had it out. So three quarters cups of whole milk, one quarter cup of spring water, oops, I spilled a little bit there, and then one and a half tablespoons of sugar. So a tablespoon is three teaspoons. So we're gonna do one tablespoon and then half of three is one and a half. So we'll do one teaspoon and a half a teaspoon. And now we're just gonna bring this until it, it reaches a temperature of 110 to 115. Okay, we are at about 115, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off the heat. And the next step is we are going to take our yeast and we are just going to sprinkle that across the top. We're going to let that set for five minutes. Okay, while that yeast is blooming, I'm going to go ahead and Get my flour ready. I'm going to need, it says two and a third to two and a half. Okay, so that means you're not just automatically going to dump two and a half cups in there. You're going to start with two and a third and add as you need, and you might not need the full amount. So I'll try to get in here around that. So there's one. So I'm going to measure out two and a half, but I'm not going to put the full half of cup in there. There we go. Here's cup number two. This recipe is really versatile. Depending on how you shape your, your pretzels, you can use them as hot dog buns or hamburger buns, which is usually how we do it, um, or just pretzels to snack on. The kids love these. And we're actually gonna do sandwiches tonight for dinner, and we are gonna use pretzel buns as our bread. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the half, but I'm not gonna dump the whole half in there, like I said because we might not need it all. So I'm just going to put some of that in there. I'm going to stay about that much out, and we'll just add that in as we need it, if we need it. 
So this is our yeast and milk mixture, and you can see that that yeast is nice and foamy across the top. It looks beautiful. So we're gonna dump this in our flour. I'm gonna grab my spatula and make sure we get all that little yeast or some up here on the side. Let me turn my timer off. Okay, I'm gonna turn the timer off. So we got that in there. And now we are going to add um, two tablespoons of butter and one and a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. Let me double check that. Yes, one and a quarter of fine sea salt. And I have gone ahead and put my oven on proof because once we get this dough done, then we are going to proof this for an hour. And I have a proof setting on my oven. If you don't, you can just use any warm spot in your house. So there's one teaspoon of salt and a quarter. And then we are going to start mixing this all together. There we go. Okay, we're just going to do this on low. And we're going to scrape down the sides as we need to. This is one... This is the only bread recipe I make that I actually use my KitchenAid mixer and my dough hook. I always hand knead everything, but I tried this recipe and it's just really good and it works perfect. So you don't mess with perfection. So we're just going to let this continue on slow and you can see it's kind of picking up the, the flour here on the side and it's going to incorporate it into a dough. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl, and then we're going to do this for just a little bit longer on low. And then we're going to start adding flour, because I can tell you it's going to need some. You don't want to dump this in there, you just want to sprinkle this in a little at a time. Okay, what you're looking for is a sticky dough where it pulls away from the side and you can see there in the bottom, it's not quite pulling completely away. It's still stuck to the bowl. So I'm going to add a little bit more. And then once we get this to the consistency we want it at, we're going to crank this up to about a six, which is a medium low. Actually, we're going to do a four, which is a medium low. And we're going to knead this for eight to 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to do another little bit in there. If you have to use the whole two and a half cups, that's fine. And even if you have to go just a little over, that's okay too. So don't worry about that. I still have a little bit left in my, my measuring cup, so I haven't even hit the full two and a half yet. But I just want to watch this as it blends in or kneads in. And see how it's kind of starting to pull away now. And it's not pulling there at the bottom. It's actually picking it up. I think that's about where I want it. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. It's starting to stick just a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And I think we'll have it. Then I'm going to turn this up to a four. And I'm going to set my timer for eight minutes. And I'm going to knead this dough for eight minutes. Okay, as you can see now, it's no longer pooling in the bottom. It's pulling away from the side, and the dough hook is just slapping that dough all around it. And you're just going to continue doing this until the timer rings between 8 and 10 minutes. Okay, that has been going for 8 minutes, and now we are going to remove our bowl. If I can get it to turn loose, there we go. Okay. That says to move out to a dry, clean workspace and gently knead a couple of times. And this is where I'm going to tell if the dough is right and it feels perfect. It's slightly tacky. Abby, can you come down real close and see this? Slightly tacky. See how that's kind of, but it's not sticky, so slightly tacky, but you don't want it sticking to your hand. Okay, see that? So this is actually very nice. It's soft, very pliable. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this into a ball. 
and then we are going to spray our pan. I'm just going to use a little olive oil spray here. I'm just going to use the same. There's no sense in dirtying up another dish to rise it in, so I'm just going to use the same one. So lightly spray that. Take my dough ball, and now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to put it in, and then I'm going to pick it up and flip it over, and that way both sides get a little oil on them. So I've got one. Kind of tuck that in a little bit. Pick it up, flip it, set it back in there. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is we're going to rise this. And like I mentioned, I've got my oven on proof. So I'm just going to cover this with a little saran wrap. And, and then we're going to rise that for about an hour until it doubles. And so you're just going to put that in a warm spot. If you don't have a proof setting on your oven, you can put it in your oven <clears throat> with just the light bulb on. That will be a nice warm spot. You can put it on a water heater on top of the refrigerator. So we're going to pop that in on proof. One hour. Okay, that has doubled in size. Now what we're going to do is set the oven to 450. Okay, I've got my water boiling in my kettle over here. And now we're going to punch this dough down. Ready? That's so satisfying. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to divide this dough into eight portions. Now, if you want to use a scale to make sure you have them exactly even, you're welcome to do that. You don't have to. I just eyeball it. So we need about eight equal portions. So I'm going to divide it about a half. And then if it looks too off, I'll go ahead and measure it, measure it, but I'm kind of trying not to. Okay. Oh, can you hear my dogs? Is it getting that close? To, yeah, it's 4 o'clock. They're telling me they're hungry. They don't eat till 5, though. Okay. There we go. I think this one looks a little skimpy. So I'm going to pull a little bit from these guys. And kind of, like I said, I'm just eyeballing it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shape our pretzels. Okay. The recipe says to um, roll it out to a 30-inch rope. That's really long. And for the purpose of using them for um, sandwiches, I don't want them to do that. I want them to be a little bit more closed. So I'm going to roll them out like this. Okay. to about like that. So what is that? About 18 inches or so. Then you're going to take the ends and you're going to bring it up like I make a U, cross it once, cross it twice, and then bring it down. And then I just pinch it like this. Okay. So we're going to do that again. And now I'm just going to set this one aside. And I'm going to do another one. Let's see. So we're going to film through a couple of these. That way y'all can see it. Okay. This side's a little thinner over here. So I'm going to try to get some more over there. Okay. So we got that. Our water's boiling. Bring it up to a U. Cross over. Cross over a second time. Whoops. Cross over a second time. Fold it down, and then just kind of tuck under and pinch those edges, just like that. Now, when you see the directions on this, you're like, what? So when you read it, it's kind of hard to understand. So it's just, some things are just easier to see. So we're going to go ahead and do this again. Oh, my water's ready. Here we go. I'll do this one more time for you, and then I'll do the rest of them. So you got your, your rope, basically. Okay. Bring it to a U. Take each piece. Cross over. 
cross over one more time, flip it down, and tuck it under. Okay, and we're going to do that with the remaining pieces. Okay, my daughter was trying to roll one, and she had problems. She was trying to pull it and stretch it out. So let me show you how we do this. Um, so start with your hands in the center, and then roll it back and forth. And while you press and roll, move your hands out. You're going to let your hands do the work here. So you're not going to take the dough on the different ends of the rope, and you're not going to pull it and stretch it. You're just going to start in the middle, roll back and forth, and as you roll, gently move your hands out. If your dough pulls back or breaks, it means that you need to rest it a little longer. So if that happens, rest your dough for 10 more minutes. Okay? Okay, the next step is we are going to do half a cup of baking soda. And then we're going to add some boiling water. This is really cool. I don't know why this is so fun to, to watch it do this, but it's going to boil up. So kind of pour slowly. Look at that. I don't know why that's so fun to me. I guess it reminds me of those science experiments. Did y'all ever do those where you made a volcano for like your science class? Did y'all ever do those like in middle school? You remember the brains? Did y'all ever do the brains with cauliflower where you painted it and labeled it the different parts of your brain? Those were always the, oh crap, I have a science project due tomorrow and I didn't do anything projects. There we go. So pour this slowly, otherwise it'll just bubble out all over the place. So I'm trying to get that up to about three cups, and then I'm going to stir it a little bit. Okay, let me see if that'll work. And then I'm going to stir this to kind of, I got baking soda down at the bottom. I'm trying to, I don't know why that is so fun for me, but it is. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to dip our pretzels in the baking soda water. Let me see if that's about three cups. It needs a little bit more. It doesn't have to be exactly three cups. That's just... Okay. So what we're going to do... I'm going to unplug that or it's going to keep beeping. So what we're going to do, you're going to take your pretzels... You can see the size that they are now. Let's scoot that out of the way. If you did a 30-inch rope, then there would be larger spaces kind of in between. It'd be much more of an open pretzel. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop it in there for 10 seconds. Okay. I just kind of flip it, flip it, and then pull it out. Set it on the towel and just kind of dab it to get that extra moisture off. And then you're going to set it on your baking sheet. And you're going to set these just a couple of inches apart. So then you just grab another one, dunk it for 10 seconds. There we go. Now on the recipe I mentioned earlier that you can do different things. You can do it like a hoagie bun or hot dog bun, sandwich, or um, burger. We do them a lot for burger buns, or you can just do just as a pretzel, as a snack. And so if you go to the original recipe, I'll write out the original recipe and put it in the comments. But if you want to look it up, it's Better Homes and Garden, and it was the fall baking book from the year 2014. Um, and so if you want to look for that, you might be able to find that and then get all the different ways that you can shape them and all that. Um, but this is really the only way that we do it but we just do it for hamburgers and and for sandwiches and just snacks like this i'm going to add a tablespoon of water to this egg yolk and we're going to beat this up or whisk this in rather okay so now we're going to take the beaten up egg yolk and we're just going to lightly brush our beautiful little pretzels. Okay, and then we're going to sprinkle them with salt and then we're going to get them in the oven. If y'all can hear that noise in the background, that is my son and husband moving very large furniture in the garage in the next room. So, sorry if you hear that. 
Okay, one last step. You're going to take your coarse kosher salt and you're going to sprinkle them. You could do this with everything bagel seasoning if you wanted to do that or any other type of herb that you like, um, but I just use this one. But you could use different ones if you wanted to. All right, there we go. And now we're just going to pop these little babies in the oven at 450 and we are going to cook them for 10 to 12 minutes. I'll start it at 10 and then I'll check them. Those cook for the full 12 minutes. Oh my gosh, they are so beautiful. Look at these. They are so beautiful. Okay. So full 12 minutes. Guys, these are absolutely beautiful. Next time you're at the grocery store and you see them and they are $5.00. To seven dollars for four of these little buns i want you to remind yourself hey i can make my own it only takes an hour and 45 minutes roughly and for about a dollar's worth of ingredients you can make eight of these gorgeous little buns like i said you can do them bigger make the rope longer and that way you'd have them more open or you can do them smaller like i did so that they're closed off they make perfect buns you can do hoagies you could do hot dog buns you can just eat them like this. They're absolutely wonderful. Um, but you can do this. I do hope you give this recipe a try. If you have any questions, leave me a comment because I do read all of your comments. And if you like this recipe and you want to learn to make other types of snack type foods for yourself and your family, check out some of my other videos. I highly recommend the homemade cracker video. That one is absolutely amazing. Okay, guys, I let that cool just for a minute so that I could, it wasn't so hot that I couldn't handle it. So I want to go ahead and just pull it apart and show you what this looks like on the inside. Oh my gosh, y'all, it smells so amazing. Look at that. It is so beautiful, so soft. I really hope you give this recipe a try. It is so delicious.